if you got one of these and one of these, you yourself can detect a extrasolar planet and I'm going to show you how. So how do you detect an extrasolar planet, a planet around some far off star with a pathetic little telephoto lens? If you're very lucky, the, the planet as it orbits its star will come directly in front of the star as viewed from Earth, in which case the amount of light coming from that star diminishes very briefly as the pan planet passes in front of it. But that signal could be big enough for you to detect with a DSLR camera, and so that's what we're going to attempt to do. The lens that comes with your camera is probably not going to do it, but you can very inexpensively purchase a telephoto like this one. This is a 300 millimeter Nikon telephoto. I got an adapter which allows me to put it onto my Canon camera. The other thing that you're going to need is some way to get your your camera to track the stars as they move through the sky or I should say as the earth rotates. You can purchase star trackers, they're kind of expensive, and there's an easier and cheaper way building something called a barn door tracker. The basic components of the star tracker are all pretty simple. Uh, a couple of pieces of plywood, uh, one quarter inch thick, one three quarter inch thick, hunk of aluminum, a threaded rod, 1032 threaded rod, uh, gently bent into this segment of a circle uh, with the help of a tree, a couple of gears, pulled out of a inkjet printer that was dead, a hunk of piano hinge or sometimes called continuous hinge cut from a longer piece obtained at the hardware store, and some very simple electronics, a stepper motor driver board, an Arduino, a switch, and a push button. Initially I mounted my tracker on a tripod, but I decided that was a little too precarious and built a sturdy plywood base for it. Just a tripod, some bolts, and a kind of pillar to mount it on here. Uh, this angle being the same as my latitude that helps point the axis of the hinge at the celestial pole. The first task was mounting a stepper motor onto the bottom board. Basically drilling some holes, lining things up, and uh, pressing a gear onto the stepper motor. It's just what's called an interference fit. Basically friction holds it on. The whole thing comes together easily enough, of course, if you have to build it for the first time and drill all the holes and figure out the design, it takes longer, but here I'm just reassembling it uh, after doing that once. The tricky part is putting in that threaded rod because you got to turn the gear because the gear that goes around it is sitting underneath the one on top of the stepper motor. You assemble the triangular base, and then you have something to mount it to, and you're pretty much done. Once the tracker was completed, I could mount my camera on it and take it out at night to remove the trailing that you'd otherwise get as the Earth rotates. To illustrate that, I took an image of the Orion Nebula without tracking and also with tracking. You see a much cleaner with the tracking turned on. But my target was something different. It was a star called HD 189733, around which there is a known extrasolar planet. The timing of the transit is known, so I took 170-odd pictures at the right time did something called differential photometry to measure the brightness of that star. And as you can see here in this plot, it diminishes just after the start of the transit and then returns to normal values, thus detecting an extrasolar planet.